and Emma. So first of all, I am Ari Shore. I'm the OneNote product manager for Microsoft. With me, I have the beautiful Emma Hicks, a Hi, Microsoft <laughs> innovative educator. She'll tell you. Hi, Emma. My name's Emma. Uh, I'm a trauma and English teacher in Nottingham. Turn it off. There we go. So. I'm not going to spend a ton of time going into stuff about OneNote. I'm going to hand it over to Emma in just a second. But just for kind of orientation sake, how many of you know what OneNote is? How many of you are using it? How many of you are using it in the classroom? Oh, not that many. So if people are using it personally. Oh, we got one guy over here. He's a presenter. He doesn't count. So that's great. Those of you who are here are going to learn a lot today because you stuck around. So what is OneNote? OneNote as some of you may know, is an ultimate digital notebook. So it's a, basically your typical notebook that you have with uh, paper and spiral notebook, but it is a digital notebook, meaning it is across all of your different devices. So you can organize it however you like with sections, pages, tabs, however you like, and then it's searchable. So that's, that's the real benefit of having it digital, is you can search across all of your different information that you put into that notebook. Those types of information can vary widely. So this is one of the things that differentiates OneNote from other Office applications is it really becomes kind of a uh, flexible canvas for different things. So you can put audio and video onto the page. You can put files and documents. So you can take a Word document and put it directly on the page. And then you can circle it using a pen, like on a Service Pro 3 or even an Android device. So things like that really allow for multiple input methods and really allow for the creativity in the classroom that we've seen across the board. Um, I've just heard many stories at BET of teachers using it in different ways that I'd never even thought about. And one of the things that Emma will talk to you about is the use of screen clippings, the ability to take pictures and input them, them into OneNote. So really taking something in the physical world, like a student's work in a notebook, and then bringing that into the digital world and being able to collaborate on it with the rest of the class. So that'll be really cool to see some of the things that she's doing there. The other thing I'll mention about OneNote before we move on is it's free. So it's a free application across all your different devices. You go to OneNote.com, students go to OneNote.com, they can download it on their Windows device, Mac, iPhone, iPad, any of the major devices all have native OneNote apps. And then they can also open it in the browser with just a link to that notebook. So one of the things we'll talk about is how you can use shared notebooks, the ability to have a link to a notebook, open it on any of those devices, and have collaboration in real time between students and teachers. But let me hand it off to Emma to tell you a little bit more about how she's using OneNote in the classroom in really cool and innovative ways. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, so to be honest, I've always had a bit of a love-hate relationship with technology. It tends to be the sort of thing that drives me, uh, drives me up the wall. And quite often, it's quite intimidating to be out of your comfort zone in that sort of way when you're using these kind of up-to-date technologies. I heard from a colleague and a friend that, um, that OneNote was brilliant for encouraging independent learning, that it enabled you as a teacher to provide that invaluable feedback to your students in a really efficient way. And that's pretty much what sealed it for me, this idea that I could be saving so much time. Because we've all been there as teachers when you genuinely feel like you're drowning in marking. And that's where OneNote really comes into its own. So I started using it uh, with my more and most stable GCSE English group. And once a week I would post a question about the novel that we were reading. So in this case it was Lord of the Flies. I'd post a question, students could then spend the week researching, taking photos, and they would build essentially a collaborative mind map in answer to this question. This went down really, really well. Students really enjoyed the ownership of their own work and it was a fantastic way to motivate them to do things outside of school. I then started using it with my A-level media group and this was fantastic for me as a teacher but also for them it was engaging for them and for me it just meant that I didn't have to worry about students giving me their work, giving me their paper, it was all in one place. They all had a page on OneNote and they could upload their coursework onto that page and I could mark that wherever I was. Even if I didn't have a connection to the internet, I could mark it and then when I was uh, in a place where I had internet, it would upload. So that, for me, was really, really beneficial and I was also really impressed at the way that the students took to it. It's this 
idea of ownership of their own work, going on a journey of exploration with OneNote. Okay, it feels more like we're all equal, we're all learning together. However, after I spoke to other teachers at my school, I realised that actually I was only just touching the surface of what OneNote was capable of. So this is where I started trying new things, I'll show you some examples. The first thing that, uh, that I found was I could use OneNote for my planning. Now I'm the sort of person that quite often I'll get an idea for a lesson or an activity and I just need to get it on paper. And I was ending up with all these little slips of paper in my jeans and my coat pockets. That's not how I work anymore. With OneNote, I can get my template for a scheme of work and I can think to myself, right, I've got a control assessment in three weeks and I've got to get these students to that point. What do we need to cover in that time? And this is where, <laughs> final prep, this is where I can scribble all of my ideas down and they're not going anywhere. And then at a later date, I can build on those and I can transform them into the lessons that they need to become. I can add in my objectives, I can add in my outcomes. So I've got a variety of these on my OneNote where I can just look at the schemes and think about where I'm going, what is my medium term plan. We have a look at... <laughs> A great time. If we can have a look at the power shifts in spoken language. <laughs> so this is an example of some work I've been doing with my year 10s. So after I started setting these home learning tasks for students, I realised that actually you can use OneNote in your classroom in a way that is highly engaging for students. So in this example, we were looking at how, uh, how power in conversation changes depending on the sort of language that you use. So I demonstrated the sort of graph that I wanted students to draw. So they were showing how the conversation would change, identifying the language techniques. I then started walking around the classroom and if I saw somebody working well, I'd take a photo of that and instantly insert it onto the OneNote. Instantly students are so much more engaged. It's moving away from the idea that I'm going to stand at the front of the room and I'm going to show them the perfect example of work. Suddenly it's their work that we're building on. It's so much more relevant to them, it's their learning. So here we go, we've got a student here and I can instantly write on questions. As a class we can decide on that student's next steps. Later on in the lesson we can do it again. I mean it's fantastic for AFL. So here we go, we've got a higher level student here. You know, what have they done that's brilliant that we can apply to our own work? We can ask questions. So everybody in that classroom is going on this learning journey. They're all probably getting there in slightly different ways. But again, it's a shared experience. I'm not teaching them, I'm facilitating their learning. I'm encouraging it, I'm teasing it out, I'm putting it on OneNote. At the end of the lesson, I can email this out to them. I can give them all access to this, which is fantastic. So it's there, it's permanent. If we have a look at annotations, so quite often, if I've got a PowerPoint display, okay, students will annotate it, I'll annotate it, I can then take a, a screenshot of that and insert it onto a OneNote. Now this is fantastic, again it's relevant to students, they're seeing their own work rather than me modelling what I expect from them. So we can see and I can link it in, so next lesson I can remind them, I can say you know this is how hard you worked last week, I want to see that same focus, you know, you've shown me what a metaphor is, you've shown me that you're capable of that and then we can instantly go back to that learning and build on that in a way that is really, really engaging for them. And this can build up over time. So Emma, tell me a little bit about how you took maybe a PowerPoint slide like this and brought it into OneNote, and what are, what are the things that you did here with, with the drawing and everything? Um, well, what I did was I gave the students a piece of text, and I, I just put it on my surface, and we almost played past the parcel. So it went off around the classroom, and I'm thinking, oh, is this gonna come back to me in one piece? Um, but, uh, but they like it, they get the pair, they choose a colour, they identify language technique. At the end of that process, I can use a snipping tool, or pretty much just take a screenshot of it, and insert it instantly onto this. We can then build on it at the end of the lesson. What can we now spot in that that maybe we didn't see right at the beginning? Again, fantastic for AFL, you know, really looking at their progress. Okay? I don't know if you want to show some... Uh, for the A-level coursework. Um, so this is for my A-level group, they'll put their work on, I can use these tags, so 
So a star means something that I liked in their coursework. A question mark is something that they maybe haven't answered. And then a light bulb, an idea, something they might want to include. And again, they really like this and it's fantastic for monitoring that progress. So I can see students post their work there, I mark it, they make changes and repost it. So I can see how many times I've marked their work. I can really monitor that journey of progress. And it's so difficult these days to make sure that you have evidence of the progress that you are showing your marking. And this is just one way of doing that. And the students love it. Again, it's that idea of ownership. They can peer assess, they can self-assess. My what are some of the ways that you're doing self-assessment with this app? Self-assessment, it's more of a reflection, so I might say to them, you know, I want you to go away and come back and add on that. So this is a student's work, this is her initial mind map for her product, for her uh, media coursework, and she will come back to that next week, she'll probably use a different colour, and she'll think, right, these were my initial ideas, how can I build on those? And all the time I can look at that, I can monitor her progress from any device. Uh, when we're speaking about feedback, the fantastic thing that, uh, that we heard actually from another teacher this week was, um, was that you can also record your feedback on one note, so you can put it onto the students' work and they can listen to it. And, um, and we had a fantastic example of a teacher who had recorded the feedback from an assessment and they'd given the student all of their next steps and then right at the end of this feedback they'd given them the mark. And I thought, oh, how many times have I given out students' work and they've looked at the mark they haven't really taken in what I've said, what I've written for their targets. I thought that was brilliant. They have to sit there, they have to listen to their next steps before they're able to, uh, to know how they did. So that's something I'll, uh, I'll definitely be using when I go back. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a little bit of what was possible with OneNote, with what uh, Emma showed you there. Um, there's m many other things. So Emma said she's learning some new tactics just from being at Beth this year. Absolutely. And she's been presenting twice a day, so she's clearly hasn't had a it's ton of time. It's amazing the variety of ways that teachers are using yeah. OneNote. It's such a personal thing. You know, what works for you, what works for your class, what hooks them in. Yeah. So of these things that you talked about, which one would you say has saved you the most time? Marking. Marking, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I can scribble it, I can say it. Um, you know, I can, I can type it, it's all there, it's all in one place. You know, I can be on the train back tomorrow and I can mark. I don't need my big folders, I just need one device. And for me, that's just perfect. And also, you mentioned earlier that you don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi in no. order to be able to mark. So that's, that's pretty cool that everything that you have done in OneNote in the application on your Surface Pro 3 yes. is then synced back up when you get to school, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there's no, no worry about losing any of your work that you've done on the train, right? No, it's brilliant. No. So you just saw the demo. And so I'll spend just a little bit of time kind of taking it a little bit a step further on saying, you know, hey, what happens with OneNote, the free app, when you pair it with Office 365? And so what we've seen so far with just OneNote by itself is amazing organization, kind of natural organization that you've done with a notebook in the, you know, the hard copy world with a notebook. But then also the time saving that, that Emma's experienced. And so, not, just, not just for work, as we said yeah. earlier, it's personal and professional balance. It's a good you know, point. It, it starts off as something that you want for work, but then you know, it seeps into your personal life and you've got your own shopping lists and your to-do lists. And it's not just something for school, it's something that genuinely makes an impact on the, on the rest of your life. I mean, she's planning a party, I found out, uh, Hen Hendu, is that Hendu. It? Yeah, I didn't know what Hendu was until I came to the UK, uh, but she's using it to plan yeah, that's Hendu. that's not the I, I use in school. <laughs> she, yeah, she won't show that one today, but um, I use it, you know, for shopping lists, and, you know, everyone has a different use case for it, but what's great is it's all in one place, you can access it across all your different devices, um, and, you know, work personal. It doesn't really matter, it's, it's just kind of that, that one place. And, uh, and the collaboration, I mean, that's really where you see some really interesting things happening across the world. Um, and so I'll tell you a little bit about how with, with OneNote and the OneNote class notebook creator with Office 365, you can kind of have this whole teaching and learning framework. And that's where you get some of the added student benefits of being able to do like real-time coaching. So a student has a private space where a teacher like Emma can go in and give personalized feedback to them without any other student knowing that that's happening. And that's, that's a really cool thing to be able to notice 
what is going on with a specific student's learning style and be able to tailor the education just to that. So that's what I'll show you right now with, um, with the OneNote Class Notebooks. So what is a OneNote Class Notebook before we jump into it? OneNote Class Notebook is basically a OneNote Notebook like you were seeing that Emma was showing there with her work, but it's got different permission levels set for both a teacher and the students. So a teacher has access to the entire notebook. She can see the collaboration space, which is where projects can take place, so students and teachers have equal access to that space. Then there's a content library, so it's kind of like partially permission for the teacher to be able to have full access and then the students to have only the ability to view and copy content from that. So think about it like a digital filing cabinet. So you take you know, all those hard copy documents, maybe printouts that you've scanned into OneNote, put them in the content library, and then students can then take that and put them in their personal notebooks, student notebooks, and be able to complete those assignments. And so that's really where you get that personalized learning I was talking about, of having the students have access to their personal notebook, the two shared spaces, but the teacher sees everything that's going on in the notebook. So let's switch over, and I'll show you what that looks like. So what you can see here is we have History 101 as an example class. And so as I told you, there's different spaces for a collaboration space content library, and then all the student notebooks. So I'm signed in as the teacher in Office 365, so I have the ability to see all those different sections. But you can think about these sections as kind of mini notebooks. So if we jump in here, you can see there's separate sections within it, so it's a whole hierarchy. So group projects, I jump in here, and I can see what's possible with OneNote. Like we mentioned, you know, it's kind of a container for other Office documents. So like if I want to open up this Word document that's relevant to our classical music lesson, I can just open it right up. And it opens up in Word. I can save it, it saves back to the OneNote, the OneNote notebook. So it's really great to have that one place where an entire group of students and teacher can go to see all of that content. You can see there's other types of files like audio files. Um, and what you can see along the right hand side here that different people in the class, maybe students or teacher, have contributed to the curriculum. And so in this case, you know, we have uh, a student, uh, Wenjums, who has contributed some links to important resources. We have tags, you know, check marks to check off different activities that we've done. So that's really cool to be able to see the collaboration within a classroom. Then you can see, you know, the content library, like I was mentioning, there's the ability to have you know, problems of the week. So those can get posted by the teacher there, and then the students take those problems of the week, bring them into their personal notebooks, and they're able to complete them on their own. They can also publish lectures. So if there's a lecture notes that the teacher wants published for the students, doesn't want them to edit them, those can go here as well. But then if we jump into you know, student one here, we can see the types of things that go on with student work. And what's great here is that the student can complete their work maybe with handwriting, typing, um, audio, clipping, whatever they want to do, all within that OneNote page. And so if we go here, you can see a completed problem of the week. You can see, you know, quizzes that the student has done as well. You know, you can see some of the marked up work. So like Emma was mentioning, the ability to mark up work with a pen or do something even more innovative and be able to do audio recording feedback and make the students actually learn what they were doing wrong and how they can improve. So that is, uh, that's a really powerful feature within OneNote of being able to give that personalized feedback that other students can't necessarily see. And so what I'll show you is how easy it is to now create one of those notebooks. So we'll go over to the OneNote Class Notebook Creator. This is an app for Office 365. It's a free app. So all it takes is, if you have Office 365, your IT administrator at your school or district would just install the app on the tenant, the Office 365 tenant, and then all the teachers have access to that app. So they can just jump into the app, click on it, and this is what they see. And so here, what they can do is just say they want to create a new class notebook. So in this case, uh, Emma, you want to give me another name for a class notebook that you want to teach? <laughs> uh, let's go for 10C2. 10C2. And so it creates the notebook with that name. And this is where the teacher is given 
the overview of what's within that notebook. So I showed you this slide, talked you through it, but you can see just kind of the summary of that here with you know the collaboration space with the open permissions for everyone, the content library, and then the student notebooks as the private space for the students. Then this is where um, the teacher, if they have a co-teacher or substitute teacher that they want to add, they can do that here. So I'm going to add Emma as my co-teacher, since I'm the main teacher in this case. I wouldn't say I'm a better teacher than Emma, though. Emma's a much better teacher than I am. <laughs> I just do marketing. <laughs> so if we go here to students, we can then enter in our class list. And so as long as those students have their email addresses in Office 365, then they can just enter it in and it will resolve them and know who they are. And so we just hit next. And this is where the teacher can customize what goes in each of those private student notebooks. So in this case, there's some default sections like handouts, class notes, homework, and quizzes. But we can add an extra one. What's, a, what's another one we want to add here, Emma? Uh, presentations. Presentations. I spelled presentations wrong. So we add presentations. You could add more. And we just hit next. And then this is where the teacher is able to see what that looks like. That notebook that we're, we've just kind of customized is now able to be viewed by the teacher and by the student view. So for the teacher, again, you see all of the students like we just showed you in OneNote. And for the student, they see just their personal notebook. With that, we hit Create. And so within a few minutes, you have that notebook being created for your entire class. And so what it did in the background there, oh, let's see. Try one more time. Wi-Fi there while I'm screening. We'll go in here. We'll just jump into a notebook. Got all my classes there. Yeah, we've been creating a lot of notebooks all day. You can my see. Sorted now. So I'm going to open up one of the other notebooks that we created. You'll have to take my word for it that it creates uh, creates that notebook for you. Um, so what happens is it's it's starting to open that notebook, and in a second you'll see all of those sections with you know students one through five, the content library. You know, we customize the sections within the student notebooks, and those are all open. But what I'll also call out is, you know, even though it's a, um, you know, able to be opened in OneNote for Windows, it's also just a link to a notebook. So you can open it up, you know, a student can open it up in their own browser or within uh, their own device. So that's an Android device, iOS device, or Windows device, of course. So we'll just copy-paste that link. And so we'll just remove the OneNote at the beginning of the URL just so we make sure that it opens in the browser rather than in the OneNote application. So in a second, you'll get the student view to see what the difference is between teacher and student. So here, students have their personal notebook. And you can see the different sections within it. And so if they hit open in OneNote, from whatever device they're on, it'll open on that iPad, on the uh, Android device, on their phones, you know, it really doesn't matter. And so that's a, that's a really nice um, kind of mobile first story of allowing students to be able to use whatever device they have to be able to access these class notebooks without, I mean, they don't need to have Office 365 in order to do that. So let's move back to the slides. So what you saw there 